Before I begin, just, just on a personal note, <clears throat> I'm not sure my voice is going to make it because uh, yesterday, I'm so proud, my wife ran her half marathon, 13.1 miles, and I was screaming so loud at the end. <laughs> I will tell her, I will tell her. I was screaming so loud at the end of the race, she could hear me a half mile away. And I was so proud because I think back three years when she was going through some pretty heavy-duty chemotherapy, I had tears in my eyes and I was so excited as she did this personal challenge that, um, you know, kind of, what, what do you call it when you're a singer? I blew out my instrument or whatever it is. Anyway, I'll do my best. For those of you who missed last week's exciting episode, the people of this church laughed at their priest. Okay, there I was, last Sunday at this service, standing in the gate next to an acolyte. Now, this acolyte, who shall remain nameless, has been taller than I ever since he hit sixth grade, and now he's about a foot taller than I am. And as we stood there, side by side, or rather head by rib cage, apparently our height disparity was somewhat amusing to some members of the congregation, and a church hole ran through parts of the church. Now, I got to tell you, one of my ambitions in life was that I wanted to hit average height. <laughs> and in the United States, for males, average height is 5 feet 10 inches tall. I have given up the dream. But I do have another ambition about growth. I would like to grow a bigger heart. Seems to me that's a pretty good goal for a Jesus follower. And I unfortunately cannot claim to be a great example in this area. Yes, I do believe I've got a bigger and more generous heart than I did when I was a teenager or in my 20s, maybe even my 30s. But all too often to this day, I still see a smallness a selfishness, and a lack of compassion in the heart I know best, which is my own. But there is still hope. I have seen people grow larger hearts of compassion even as they got quite elderly. I have seen people in their later years become much more kind as human beings. I remember something wonderful that was said to me by a member of our church living in a nursing home. And she was talking about how frail most everyone in that home was, that everyone had some weakness or other, maybe physical, maybe mental. But she told me they tried to help each other out. And then she said, we are all kin here. We are all kin here. Those are the words of a great heart, I think. Now, I've read the Gospels of Matthew and Mark and Luke and John again and again and again. And Jesus has the great heart that I want to have. He told stories sometimes about finding lost things like we just heard from Luke's Gospel. He wants us to know that God loves us enough to search for us. Jesus says God is joyful when we come home. Jesus says God loves it when we turn away from the bad stuff and start fresh again. Jesus says God's heart is so big that divine joy is not complete until everyone makes it home. And Jesus follows that policy. So you better believe that you are welcome at this table today. You better believe that this altar rail is here just as something to lean on, not to keep anyone out. You better believe that the Jesus policy is to welcome everyone, not just, you know, people like us. How big is God's heart? Well, listen to the stories Jesus told and find out. Look at the way Jesus lived and see. Pay attention to Jesus and learn. God's heart is big enough for the disciples and the demon-possessed. God's heart is big enough for the Pharisees and the prostitutes. God's heart is big enough for the rich man and for the widow. God's heart is big enough for Baptists and Episcopalians. God's heart is big enough for Jews and Muslims. God's heart is big enough for Hindus and for Buddhists. 
God's heart is big enough for Democrats and Republicans. God's heart is big enough for Libertarians and Greens. God's heart is big enough for Conservatives and Liberals. God's heart is big enough for the nursery and the nursing home. God's heart is big enough for males and females and for those who aren't even sure. God's heart is big enough for the strong and the weak. God's heart is big enough for the straights and for the gays, for the young and for the old, for the lost and the littlest and the least. And if my God has a heart that big, and if Jesus taught about a heart that big, then I want to have a heart, a bigger heart than I have right now. That means Psalm 51 has the prayer for me. We just prayed that psalm together. And I love that line. Creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. I say that prayer every Sunday when the acolyte washes my hands just before I go up to the altar. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. I want a clean heart, a new heart, a right heart. I want a heart big enough to welcome everyone as Jesus did. I want a heart big enough to love the whole world the way God does. God's heart is big enough for me. God's heart is big enough for you. God's heart is big enough for the whole world. And if that's not good news, then I don't know what is. Amen.